Today's guest is a worldwide traveling evangelist who travels all over the world sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and praying for the sick. She has been on many television and radio shows sharing her remarkable ministry, and we are glad to have Dr. Loretta Blassingame with us on Time with Teresa today. Please help me welcome Dr. Loretta. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Oh, it's my, it's my <laughs> treat to be here. This is a, a, quite an honor to get to come be with you today. Oh, well, it's our honor, Thank and you. it's such a delight to have you. And let's just get right started okay. right into this interview. First, I'm sure our viewers would probably like to know what how you surrendered your life over to Christ and what made you make that choice to surrender your life over to Christ? Well, I had a brother that wanted me to go to church and uh, he went on a 42 day fast and I kept saying no. <laughs> and finally after, I didn't know he was fasting, but on his 42nd day he came by and I said, I'll go tonight if you never ask me to go again. Because he went to a Pentecostal <laughs> church. Oh. And we wasn't into that, Mom and Daddy said. But we didn't go to the Baptist church either. <laughs> so when I went, the preacher was preaching about Jesus, how loving he was, and how wonderful. And so I got up right in the middle of the sermon. I stopped the sermon. I went down the aisle, and I said, can you introduce me to this man that loves me this much? And so the pastor led me to the Lord, and then I went to church the second night. And when I came home the second night, I was sitting on the side of the bed, and I was taking off my shoes. And Jesus walked into my room and showed me a white Bible and told me he was calling me to preach, and I would take healing to the world. Wow. And he said if I would, he kept holding the Bible. He said, if you preach this gospel, I will heal people. You will never have to touch them, and I'm going to send you to the world. And the multitudes and the masses will be healed. And whatever part they need in their body, the Spirit of God will just come upon them and I will do it. And so I said to the Lord, Lord, how can I preach about you? I've only known you two days. Mm -hmm. And it was really, yeah. uh, to be right honest, Teresa, it was kind of frightening because I thought, right. you know, he told me all this big ministry I was going to have and here I only knew him two days. Can you imagine somebody telling you all that and you just knew him two days? And I said, I, Lord, I don't know what to do. He said, well, I will help you. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it, was that your first time to even be in a Pentecostal church? Yeah, yeah. And then we to have Baptist. all this heavy spiritual experience yeah. laid upon you. You probably thought she's losing your mind there for a little bit, didn't you? Well, I, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't tell mother and daddy exactly how it went on. Because <laughs> daddy said, when, you cannot go to that whole of church. And, <laughs> and uh, my brother, he, I, my brother really was the one the Lord called and he had a lot of talent. He played the organ, wrote songs and everything. But he didn't want to preach. But he, mm -hmm. he said, the Lord told him I would. Wow. Now, and, and how old were you during that time? I was 13. 13, 13 years, years old. old. Wow. Wow. And you've probably never been the same since that experience. Oh, I sure have not because I went to church Sunday and I told the pastor what happened. And I said, Pastor, can I pray for the sick after the service? You finish. And can you find out if somebody is dying in the building? And can I pray for them first? So there was a lady that they said she would die if she didn't get a new heart. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, can I pray for her? So I laid hands on her. And I said, the Lord said he would heal them all. Mm -hmm. So she went back to the doctor Monday and she had a brand new heart. So I got to do a healing service every Sunday morning at wow. 13 years old. At 13 years old. <laughs> God can use the young and he can use the old. And all in between, isn't that right? Age is no significance mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God. It's the call that's significant. Praise God. And knowing God. that Jesus said it. And if he said it, he will surely fulfill it. Amen. Amen. So you've been preaching now over 50 years, over 50 traveling years. all over uh -huh. the world. And as a female evangelist, could you share with us uh, how you were received in the early years and then how you're received today? Has the body of Christ and the world start, started welcoming female ministers? What changes have you seen? Uh, well, it was difficult in the uh, beginning, but then, of course, my pastor opened that door. And uh, then when I first stepped out in full-time ministry, of course, and I kept praying for the sick, and I was faithful. Mm -hmm. I'd do mm -hmm. some meetings on the weekend. But then when I stepped out in full-time ministry, the Lord took me to California. And there was a man that had a full gospel businessmen's fellowship meeting, and they was at a bowling alley, and somebody told him, said, well, we got an evangelist here from Texas, and she has a healing ministry. Won't you ask her to come? And she died and went to heaven. So I was talking about I died and went to heaven, and we had a great, great grandson of one of our presidents there that was blind in one of his eyes. And while I'm talking about heaven, God gives him a new eye. 
Wow. So that got Dema Shakaran's attention. And so he put the word out to open up all those chapters for me. Uh-huh. So yeah, I've heard that name before. He, he headed up the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship, Dema Shakaran. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, so because of the signs and the wonders that followed your ministry, that really gave you better access in the early years? Is that what uh-huh. you're saying? Yeah, because uh, the miracles was, was so great. The Word just spread and then I did healing services at Angeles Temple and then I did service at uh, Lord Overby's uh, uh, Presbyterian Church mm-hmm. and uh, I did it in big Methodist churches, done one in a Catholic church. Awesome. I love that. And, uh, I love it when you can go all into the body of Christ. Yeah. Now, a lot of the Pentecostal churches didn't want me, but I didn't have a problem because the denominational churches did. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Full Gospel put their approval on it, the ministry, and then I did uh, the healing service at Pat Robinson's for Full Gospel businessmen. So that kind of spread, and uh, it wasn't long. People knew if you needed a creative miracle or a part in your body, just come get in the room. That's what I tell people. Just come take a seat. That's mm-hmm. all you need to do is come take a seat. Mm-hmm. The Lord will do the rest. Now, I do pick up the key for the Lord. Mm-hmm. As, as you well know, Teresa, we, we, we that head up the ministry, we have to do something first. Mm-hmm. And when we do it, then it sets a platform for the Holy Spirit right. to do the rest. Right. We, we step out on faith ourselves. We do. Uh-huh. Welcome the presence of the Lord mm-hmm. and the Word of God in because that's where the anointing is. That's where the power is. And so it's, it's mainly we just usher in the presence of yeah, God in like His Word. what you're doing right now. Yeah. Look at all the people in your life. Your life is affecting because you dared to take a step of faith. Mm-hmm. So I say thank you, Teresa, for doing that. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit more about this out-of-body death experience that you had. Well, when I was in my early 20s, I had two heart attacks. I was in a doctor's office here in Dallas, and I died, and they pulled the sheet over my head, and I took a tour of heaven. I went, I, I went into heaven. Jesus was standing there. I asked him, could I see my grandmother? So I saw my grandmother. I had a baby brother that died when he was like six weeks old. And Jesus, although my baby brother was like he was 12, and Jesus introduced me to my brother and said, this is your brother, John Thomas. And then I said to the Lord, I remembered in the Bible where it talked about our mansions, and I said, Lord, can I see my mansion? And so in heaven, you don't walk, you just (laughs) go through the wall and all. And so Jesus and I, we just went through, through the walls. It was like gold, it was like glass. And we were just there. And when I looked, I didn't have any furniture, but my mansion was huge. And then I said, Lord, can I see my grandmother's? I was puzzled because I had no Mm -hmm. furniture. I said, Lord, can I see my grandmother's mansion? And when we went into her mansion, she had furniture. And I was a little puzzled about that. But then I thought, well, I'm not up here. She she is. She needs the furniture, and I don't. (laughs) So when I go to heaven, I'm going to have the furniture, trust me. <laughs> so that, did that indicate to you that well, you're not staying? You're yeah, I was staying. So anyway, the Lord said, I want to talk to you about your ministry. And I started telling the Lord how unhappy I was. I wanted to stay. And he said, I've called you to bring the multitudes and the masses to the kingdom. And he said, I'm going to give you a tour of heaven. I'm going to take you to the throne room. But he said, you have to go back to earth and fulfill your call. He said, there, there's all types of different ministries. Some people are called to just bring one person. Some are called to bring few. And then some are called for the multitudes and the masses. And when I put an anointing upon you to bring the multitudes and the masses, you can't stay in heaven until you do. And he said, you will have a very large ministry, one of the largest in the world, before I bring you back. And he said, there's something that I want to tell you. I don't want you to be concerned about how you're going to get where I'm telling you to go, Mm -hmm. because I will put you there. Mm -hmm. And you're never to get under any denomination. He said, I did not set up denominations. I don't want you under any denomination. You're to only be under us three. Mm -hmm. And when you take the platform, he said, always remember this, I will always stand at your right side. Wow. And there's been many times people would jump up and say, Jesus, is that your right side? <laughs> <laughs> that got exciting, especially yeah. when I go to missions and mm-hmm. preach. And so he told me that to remember that all I had to do was to speak it. He, he, and he said, I don't need your hands. But he said, if you ever lay your hand on anybody, always remember this, they will always feel my hand first. Praise God. He said, Praise you God. speak it. He, mm-hmm. said, he said, you speak it and I'll perform it. 
Praise God. And so that was wonderful. And I did that and saw the river of life and the table spread with food. And then Jesus took my right hand and he said, now I'm going to take you to the throne room. So we went into this huge room, which looked as big as heaven. I mean, as big as earth. And when he took me in, he was on my right side and he turned like this to me. And he said, now I'm going to introduce you to my father, God Almighty. And so when I looked to the left, there was this huge chair. It was like, a, it's hard to explain. It's because nothing down here, it's like nothing up mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and so anyway, God was sitting on this huge throne and he had long white hair. It was like a big light was in his eyes. I could see his eyes, but it was hard to make them out like Jesus. Jesus had the prettiest blue eyes I've ever seen. And uh, he looked in my eyes and people have stopped me all over the world and said, can I see in your eyes? Mm -hmm. Can I, I see Jesus in your eyes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I loved her song so much. <laughs> and uh, when uh, God, God spoke to me, he, uh, when I looked at him though, I was kind of amazed because he was so big. Jesus was like about 180 pounds. I'd say maybe 6'2", but God was like bigger than two of these tables put together. He was huge. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he uh, spoke, it was like all heaven just shook and mm -hmm. thundered. It was like, mm -hmm. when we hear thunder here, it was like multiply it time a thousand mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said. He said, I have made provision for everything you will ever need on earth. And then he did like this, and he put his hands almost right on top of mine, because when he did like this, I put my hands like that. And when his hand come almost on top of mine, he said, and all you will ever have to do is just reach out and take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, praise God. You know, there's been several people that have had these life experiences where they die and, and they go on a, a phenomenal journey with the Lord or, or they visit hell, they visit heaven and they come back, they're never the same and they share. And you know, everyone has a little bit different story, but there's several that, several themes and several threads that are the very same. Just beauty, light, the peace, the authority, mm -hmm. the power that you feel. So that's awesome. That's a very, very special experience. Now, is that what inspired you to write? Is anybody up there? Well, it was because I lost my only child in 1991. And I had started uh, the book and then I had laid it down and uh, Ricky came into my office. Well, in fact, that was the last time I saw him. He was uh, healed right a couple of days after that. And he said, he said, Mother, can I see the manuscript on the book? And so I had it in a box, and so I got it out, and he laid hands on it. And he said, Mother, he said, God spoke to me last night about your ministry, and you're going to do the book now. And he said, God's going to put it around the world for you. Wow. And uh, so... And that was right before? And, and uh, he died right after that. Well, he, that was the last time I spoke to him on this mm -hmm. earth when he told me that. Mm -hmm. So then I got busy after he died and I started trying to put it together. And so I thought um, the name was good. Is anybody up there? And mm -hmm. uh, the Lord has put it around the world. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, and, and as God. a matter of fact, people have been healed just reading this book because mm -hmm. I put testimonies in there of uh, a lot of people that was dying. Most of them were dying that got mm -hmm. healed in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Lord told me, he said, I will bless this book like I blessed Catherine Kuhlman's book, mm -hmm. I Believe in Miracles. Amen. And so, as you know, Teresa, God blesses a ministry, not just one thing we do. Everything mm -hmm. we do is blessed. Yes, amen. And uh, thank you amen. for giving me that book you gave me today. <laughs> You're welcome. I know it's blessed and I'll enjoy it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, okay, now, Dr. Loretta, you travel all over the world sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in many countries. Tell me what has been the most challenging country to date that you have shared the gospel in? Well, I have gone in like um, when they had the worst earthquake in Turkey. I was carried in to pray uh, for over 500 families because there was no food really being brought in or they was drinking water out of a mud puddle. And uh, I was carried on the grounds because a lot of them already had pneumonia, the children. And I did that for five hours, a little over five hours. But as you know, you don't get it okay to go pray on Muslim ground. <laughs> so, and uh, then I was carried into Lebanon when the bombing was going on and they took me into a Catholic school there and I prayed over 500 children 
-hmm. students. Mm -hmm. And the next day they bombed the school and it was blown all to pieces, but not one student was harmed. Oh, thank you, Lord. So, you know, I do some things like that. Uh, you know, we just do what we have to do to get it done, don't we? Amen. And Amen. it doesn't matter to the Lord that we're a female because if God anoints you, He will use you, and He works with the anointing, not with the male or female. Right. So that's what I tell people. You know, if God has anointed you, you go. God right. will take care of the rest. Right. We have to obey the Lord. Yeah, and, we do. We uh, do. Of course, uh, you know, I, I don't I, I don't advocate going to get scripture, and I know you don't either. No, I don't. But we, we feel at peace with the scriptures. Uh -huh. We feel at peace with yeah. our calling, with God's anointing, and with mm -hmm. the scriptures. So praise God. So to date, what is one of the greatest miracles that's ever happened at one of your meetings? Well, we've had, I don't know how many people healed of cancer. I guess I'm kind of known all over the world as the lady with anointing for cancer. And we've had, uh, we, well, in the book, there was a baby they pulled the plugs on to die in a hospital. And they took me to the hospital. And when I laid hands on the baby, God gave the baby a new brain, two new eyes, a different color than what she had before, wow. and a new heart. And so I took the baby and the mother, it's in the book, to TBN and we interviewed her. And so I have the awesome. picture here while we were sitting on TV in. Uh-huh. Awesome. <laughs> so we do things like that and mm -hmm. Well, uh, so so you have documentation to back up some of the miracles that oh, have happened. Oh, all of them. We ministry. don't ever put anything in writing if we we can't prove it. Awesome. There's the baby and so well, we're at TBN. That's the mother God. and the baby. Yeah. Oh, I just love that. I just love that. I love the documentation. And God does too, you know. I mean, He loves it. Because, you, you know, everyone, until they know the Lord, they don't know that this is possible. They just don't know oh, it's know possible. It. Yeah, and that's what's so exciting. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with sharing the documentation of these miracles and things with the people. So praise God for that. Yeah, I always tell people, like this lady here, I went to the hospital and prayed for her. They gave her three days to live. Mm -hmm. and they were here from overseas Korea. Mm -hmm. And I laid hands on her and <clears throat> God gave her a, a, a miracle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, th they didn't even believe in healing. And I said, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she got healed of cancer and she's still healed. And they're in ministry right here in Dallas now. Awesome. That is so awesome. So. Well, Dr. Loretta, uh, Katie Baker is with us today, oh, no. and she has come to bless us with a song today. Oh, she's so anointed. Yeah. So I'm going to scoot over and talk with her a little bit, and I'll be right back to wrap up this discussion with you. Okay. Well, it's a delight to have Katie Baker on Time with Teresa today. Welcome, Katie. Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate being here. Well, it's so wonderful to have you. Could you go ahead and tell our viewers just a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm an environmental consultant for oil and gas companies. I'm married. I um, have four children, 10 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Well, you're a busy lady oh, then, yes. aren't you? <laughs> so how do you find time to write songs? Well, I just <laughs> really wasn't planning on writing a song. Um, we were just driving down the road on the way back from Kansas after working in the oil and gas fields. And I was thinking about how, you know, many of the Muslim people, Jesus is actually appearing to them. Yes. And so I was driving along. Jake was taking his nap. We switch off when we're driving. And all of a sudden I said, well, Lord, why is it I can't see you? Everyone in these Muslim countries are seeing you, but why can't I see you? I've loved you my whole life. Why don't I see you? <laughs> and then it was the scripture came, well, more blessed is he who has not seen and yet he's believed. And that was like, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's a beautiful story, and this is a beautiful song. And so you wrote this song, r Driving Down the Road, right. and based on the testimony that the Muslims have of seeing Jesus in another country. Yes, and How I just How real thought, is that? I just thought, well, if only I can look into his eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was just almost like a download, the whole Everything just came at one time, mm -hmm. so I really didn't write it. I have to give God the glory for that. Amen. Amen. Well, be blessed as Katie Baker sings, I Can Imagine the Eyes of Jesus. Blessings. Thank you, Teresa. I imagine the eyes of Jesus Looking down from heaven above Watching over his earthly children His eyes 
eyes full of mercy and love. I imagine the eyes of Jesus searching the hearts of men for those who earnestly seek him. Will you open the door and let him in? New life begins at the foot of the cross. All sins are washed away. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Today begins a new day. I imagine the eyes of Jesus looking down from heaven above. He came for me and he set me free, my Savior, my Lord, and my God. All sins are washed away. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Today begins a new day. I imagine the eyes of Jesus searching of men. He came for me and he set me free, my Savior, my Lord, and my God. My Savior, my Lord, and my God. Dr. Loretta, there's been a lot of great things in your ministry and accomplishments that you have made, but I want to know, when you move on to your heavenly reward for the final time, yeah. <laughs> what is the greatest message you want to leave behind? Well, first of all, I want people to know that God loves them, and Jesus came and died for them to be set free. And it's uh, not a matter of a denomination, because God loves everybody, and since he told me he didn't set up denominations, he wants us to love one another. The greatest key in the whole Bible of ministry is Psalms 133, unity. Because God commands everything Blessing. where there's unity mm -hmm. and all the blessings, even life forevermore. Mm -hmm. And if I could just get everybody loving one another, <laughs> I think we'd have everything we need. Everybody would be uh, healed. Everybody would be born again. And everybody would really know who God is. And see, my challenge is, God told me, make me real to people. And so that's one of my jobs. I try to bring God so real to people that when I leave them, they know, they know there's right. a God. Right. And God said, just pull a little of that power out of heaven and we could do it. So that's what I try to do. Amen. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, Dr. Loretta, I know we have viewers out there that really wonder if there's really a heaven or a hell. They've never seen it. They've never experienced some of the things you've been talking about. And then there's people that are just wondering, is there really somebody up there? Is there really somebody up there that cares about me? Is he really looking at me and my life? Can he really help me? Would you take some time and pray for those that are searching for truth and for those who are sick and need healing? Well, it's just real simple with God. He can do it in a minute. Just, just look up and say, Father, come to me. Make yourself real to me and touch me, Lord. I'm going to ask the Lord right now that His Spirit, the power of God, 
the power of the Spirit of the living God just touch you. Just come down right now, wherever you are, no matter what you're doing, and just touch you. And Lord, let them feel the power of the living God. Now, I know you are because I feel it here. And God is moving it through this camera and through the TV. Just say, Lord, use me. Tell me what to do. You know, it just take one day at a time. That's all I do. You know, sometimes I don't even think about tonight what I'm going to do. I just think about what I'm going to do right now because I know God's going to take care of it right now. And that's the greatest thing about God. You don't have to rule your life. God will take it over and he'll walk through your life. And he'll make it easy and he'll be there always to help you. And then when your time comes, there is a heaven. Trust me. I am here. The doctor verified I had two heart attacks. He verified I have a heart of a 13-year-old child. So it's been verified. I went to heaven. I have that new heart even though I'm 69. Everybody knows it now. Everybody's telling it. But my heart is like I'm 13. That's why I'm still like a child. <laughs> so believe me. It's real. Heaven is real, and that's where you want to go. Amen. Well, go ahead and speak a word of prayer over them. Okay. Father, bless the audience today. Let your power and your anointing bless the audience. And I just pray right now that if you need a miracle, you just tell the Lord, I receive it. I receive it. You know, I was praying, and I knew someone is going, well, it's going to be watching by the name of Stuart, and you're dying with cancer of the lungs. But God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. The power of God is touching you, and you are being healed. And if you, whatever miracle you need, whoever you are, wherever you are, you just say, Lord, touch me. Spirit of God, touch them. Touch them. Bring mighty miracles from this TV today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, Dr. Loretta, uh, there's so much we could talk about, but it's been a delight having you on the program. Thank you for coming. Teresa, <laughs> it was a delight to come and be with you and bless you for what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Thank you. Bless God you. bless you. God bless you. Well, remember, God is just one prayer away and heaven is just a mere heartbeat away. Be sure to welcome your creator, God, into your heart and life today. It's the only investment that you will ever make that has eternal rewards. God bless you.